If you're not ready to die, then you're not ready to live. Oh, that got your attention. Hey, my friends, this is Gabe Kolstad with Westside Community Church, and I'm here with the Midweek Motivation episode of our podcast just to kind of catch you in the middle of the week and get your reframed kind of attention focused on living your best life. But you cannot do that if you're not ready to die. And that's the topic that I'm tackling today is what is heaven really going to be like? You know, uh, the the your view of the afterlife determines literally everything about the way you live your current life. I mean, a right view of what's coming after you die will help you have a right pr- approach, the best approach to the life that you live right now. And I'm going to read you some some scripture from the New Testament. I'm going to I'm going to walk through some things we've been learning last Sunday at Westside we talked about heaven, hell and hope. And um, if you didn't catch that, go back and listen to it. I think it might be enlightening for you, not only to know what's heaven going to be like, but also what does Jesus say about what hell is going to be like? And then why do we have hope? Uh, but I want to read you some scripture from the New Testament that just kind of shares what is heaven going to be like? Because, you know, we see we see these pictures in our minds. And in fact, I showed one last weekend of like, a you know, a cat with a harp on a cloud, you know, all these weird images that we have or that we've seen in, in some book or, you know, some cartoon or just whatever image we might have in our mind. What is heaven going to be like? Is it you on a cloud with a harp? I mean, God forbid that be our eternal sentence, right? That is not what the scripture teaches. It's not what Jesus talks about. Um, It's not what is waiting for those who follow Jesus and say yes to him. He's promised us a home in heaven. He's promised us eternal life if you're a follower of Jesus. And um, and so what is it like? Well, here's a a little bit from Revelation, uh, excuse me, from Colossians chapter three. It says this, says, since you've been raised to new life with Christ, set your sights on the realities of heaven. I, I like the word reality. Paul's like, it's real. He says, where Christ sits in the place of honor at God's right hand. He says, think about the things of heaven, not the things of earth. Why? Because it motivates us to think about the fact that there's coming a day that's going to be better than what we experience right now, according to all of the biblical authors. He says, for you died to this life and your real life is hidden with Christ and God. And when Christ, who is your life, is revealed to the whole world, you will share in all his glory. I mean, there's coming this incredible day that uh, we get to experience. We get to share in all of his glory. And then he says in verse five of Colossians three, so put to death the sinful earthly things lurking within you. He talks about how we then use what we know about our future to determine how we live our now. And uh, and so there's great motivation then in knowing what is heaven going to be like. Paul the Apostle in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 says to be absent from the body, meaning to die and leave what he calls this earthly tent, uh, which is temporary and failing and, you know, I don't, I'm... I'm don't tell anybody, but I'm turning 50 next month. And um, there are like new squeaks in my knee. Every morning I wake up and I'm like, crack, 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 crack. And it sounds like the floor is creaking, but it's actually different joints all across my body. <laughs> you know, like These things are failing. They're not meant to last forever. Um, and there's this great motivation coming for when we cross the line into eternity from our now and uh, so what do you think heaven's going to be like? Have you ever thought about that? Have you ever like made a list of, well, it's probably going to be like this and like this and like this. If you think that heaven is going to be this kind of surreal, weird, otherworldly, kind of non-physical experience, maybe you, you're just playing a harp for millennia, you know, then it's not going to be very motivating. But if you understand what scripture says, what Jesus promises about it, it could change everything for you every day. And I think that's what the Bible intends for you and me to experience. So before I get into it, I want to recommend a book. It's it's Heaven by Randy Alcorn. It is a humongous book. It is an incredible reference. It's got chapters with very specific questions, uh, like what will our day-to-day be like in heaven? Uh, great question, you know, like, will there be games? Uh, like, will we work? All these different chapters in this book that I think will, that are all based on scripture that I think you'll find incredibly helpful. 
But let me read to you from Revelation 24, from the, the apocalypse of John. The, the apostle John saw this vision that God gave him of heaven, and he wrote it down, and this is part of the, the Bible. And it says this in Revelation 21, it says in verse 1, Then I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the old heaven and the old earth had disappeared. I want you to know that what we think of as heaven right now is, is heaven, but it's temporary. Uh, you know, the Bible even refers to it as heaven, but also lets us know that heaven is going away. And so currently there are people in a place, uh, according to scripture, a real place, a physical place right now called heaven, and uh, they're waiting for judgment day. And it is right now a place of peace, a place of perfection. It is, it is a place where uh, they're in the presence of God because Jesus is there right now. And, uh, and yet, that is going to disappear and be replaced with a new heaven. We're going to talk about that in a minute. The, the Apostle John says, And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down from God, from God out of heaven like a bride beautifully dressed for her husband. I heard a loud shout from the throne saying, Look, God's home is now among his people. He will live with them and they will be his people. God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes and there will be no more death or sorrow or crying or pain all these things are gone forever. This is the eternal state that when you think of heaven, this is the heaven that will always be heaven. And what might be surprising is that it is going to be on earth, the new earth, the recreated earth. Randy Alcorn in the book, Heaven goes into great length about this entire thing. And he calls it the eternal state. And a few things about the eternal state that are definitely true. So when you think about if you're a follower of Christ, if you believe in Jesus and the grace that he offers, if you've accepted his forgiveness, Jesus said, then you're his child and he's going to prepare a place for you. And this is what your future is going to be, a new body. Paul says, we will not be spirits without bodies. And uh, and so we we will have bodies. We will, we will physically be able to operate. Um, this is a physical place that we're going to be of beauty, of indescribable, ex elaborate beauty. Uh, it is a, it, we will do things like eat and drink. Um, the, this is like how our future will be. It's going to be as physical as what we experience now. Isn't that fascinating? Uh, God will dwell there. There's descriptions of how we won't need a, a sun or a moon or stars because the light will be coming from Jesus Christ, that he will be the light, that we, there's so much brightness in his glory. And if you look back in the Old Testament, you see anytime ever ever God started to reveal himself to somebody like Moses, uh, the brightness was so bright that it blinded people. And that's a part of the reality that we're going to experience is this brightness, only our new bodies will be able to take in the glory of God. Uh, it's a place of restoration. So let's say, uh, maybe you were born with some sort of birth defect. Um, guess what? You're going to be restored 100%. You're going to be perfect in that sense. Um, it's a place of reunion. Like, let's say you've lost a, a family member. They've gone on before you to heaven. Uh, you're going to be reunited with them. It's going to be amazing. Uh, you're going to see them. You're going to know them. And they're going to know you, according to the Apostle Paul. We are going to be known as we know each other. And so you will be recognizable. And the others that you know, they will be recognizable. It's going to be a place of reward where we're going to be given rewards. Right now, Jesus even says, you know, lay up treasure in heaven. What is he saying? He's saying, save some of the money you would normally spend on yourself. This is literally what he's saying. And spend it on God's kingdom. Spend it on, you know, other people. Spend it on investing in eternity. Spend it on doing things for other people that declare God's kingdom. Invest in God's work. And he's going, so, so lay up treasure in heaven. What he's saying is, if you will sacrifice right now things you'd normally spend on yourself for the work of God, you're going to be rewarded in heaven. He says 30, 60, 100 times what you give up now is going to be given back to you then. In what way? Well, he's talking about uh, a home that he's preparing for you. He's talking about literal rewards that you're going to have. He's talking about um, actual levels of service and responsibility that he's going to give us that, uh, you know, these are, it's kind of like getting a, a job. You know, there's going to be a promotion. There's going to be uh, more responsibility for those who have, 
who have worked toward that. And uh, does this mean you earn your way to heaven? No, it does not. But it does mean you can earn eternal rewards. And this is a, all a part of what the Bible teaches about heaven. Uh, we know that it is not some utopia we create. Jesus, praise me, your kingdom come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Some people have misinterpreted that to say, hey, we could create heaven here. That is not what Jesus was saying, and it's certainly not what the Bible teaches. We know that the current earth, the current heaven have to be done away with so that a new heaven and a new earth can be created. And, um, you know, one of the cool things I love about this is that the new heaven and the new earth, it, it's a carryover of cultures and nations. And what we know is there's every tribe, tongue, people, and language is going to be there. It's going to be very diverse. So every expression of culture that we see is going to be in heaven. I mean, so I've been to Africa before. And one of the things about a church service in Africa is it is so loud. <laughs> I mean, people are clapping. I've never heard louder clapping in my life and singing with such joy and exuberance. I mean, these are the kinds of things that we're going to experience. Uh, we're told that there are going to be scrolls in heaven, elders who have faces, martyrs who wear clothes, and even people with palm branches in their hands. It's going to be so tangible. I mean, so real. In some ways, I think we'd be better off thinking of heaven as like, like when we're going to go on vacation and we're looking forward to it because we know we're going to be sitting on a beach, you know, in a chair, the sun on our faces. We're going to feel things. We're going to experience things. We're going to have relationships. We're going to have conversations. We're going to eat meals. I mean, these are the kinds of things that the Bible talks about that we get to experience. One of the greatest things I think we get to experience is that in heaven, those who endured bad things on earth are comforted for them. I mean, we know there's no more sorrow or crying or pain or any of that stuff, but we're also given the indication that there's some awareness of, uh, for those who are going to heaven now, the, the heaven that will be done away with, but while there still is humanity and earth and history unfolding and crime on earth and all these things, there's some awareness in heaven, as Hebrews chapter 12 teaches, that there's this there's this great uh, witness, crowd of witnesses cheering us on, aware. I mean, I always think of my mother-in-law in that case, because my, my wife lost her mom a number of years ago, and I think about, I think she knows, you know, what we're going through. I think, I think she sees what we experience. And, and so it's always created this question mark in my mind. Well, okay, but how, how could she know about the events of earth and not be sad? I mean, think about all the stuff that we see, but here's what she gets. She gets perspective because she's separated from the time and space that we are currently living in, in the sense that she knows the end of the story. And so there can be this great joy to go, oh, I see you're struggling right now, but I know, I know what's coming. And I know the bigger picture and I know the end of the story. And, and so there's this great comfort for people who have endured bad things. And, you know, I, in one way you could just go, okay, anything you can do on earth within reason, you know, obviously short of sin, you can do in heaven. You can rest, sleep, eat, work, create, travel, play, all of these things mentioned in scripture about what heaven is going to be like is going to be exhilarating forever. It's going to, it's, it's almost like, th picture this, picture your life here on earth as a dot, and then picture eternity as a line that goes on forever, and it's going up and to the right because it's going to get better and better and better and better, and it's never going to stop. The real learning from all of this is, okay, if this life, what is it, 70, 80 years, I mean, my my grandma on my stepdad's side uh, lived to be 103. Long life, right? My great-grandfather, 97. His sister, 101. My great-grandmother, 101. You can live a long time. That's nothing, though, compared to eternity, right? Sometimes we live our whole life just for the, just for the dot. And I think Scripture is teaching us, live for the line, you know? Live for the line. If you're not sure about your own destiny because you're not sure about your relationship with Jesus, you know you can you can actually have a relationship with Jesus. You can be sure of this. You can actually claim your own spot in heaven simply by believing in Jesus Christ. And if you've never said yes to him, all he's asking you to do is to believe. Tell him this. Tell him, Jesus, I believe in you. I believe in your life, your death on the cross, your resurrection. I believe you paid for my sins. 
on the cross and I receive you as my savior. The Bible tells us that if we believe, he gives us the power to become the children of God. So if you just said yes to Jesus, you can actually text that to me. You can tell me that you did that by texting the word Jesus to 503-905-9067 so that I can send you some resources and get you started on a new journey. And uh, we are so excited for you. I thank you for listening in. I hope this has been motivational for you. I hope you can start thinking now about what is your future going to be like? Because this, this life we live, very temporary. The trouble we go through, very, very temporary. What's coming? Forever amazing. And so we can be motivated to, to start, as Jesus said, laying up treasure in heaven, you know, working toward the things that matter most, thinking longer term than just right now so that our lives can actually make a bigger splash in not only this world, but the world to come. I hope this has been encouraging. I want to ask you to just do two favors. One would be, would you subscribe and share right now? Because we love to get this word out as far as we possibly can. And the second thing is stop by a Westside service. We love to talk about stuff that matters to your daily life on a weekly basis. And you can join us online at westsidecommunitychurch.com any weekend, or you can come to our campus right here in the Portland, Oregon area. We'd love to see it either way. We hope you have an awesome week.